Excuse me, little dog. Hi, right, guys. <clears throat> it is a cloudy but almost balmy night here. Almost balmy night in late October. Imagine that. It would be. It is a Monday night. Good Lord, where are we? October 24th. 2022, somewhere in there. I can't read without my glasses. Uh, so anyway, guys, uh, we're just going to read a, a three-pack. I'm going to touch on three stories here out of the mainstream media that you alert readers have either sent me or I found right here on Yahoo News. It gets all mixed up, uh, and you can... See if you can figure out the common denominator. Let's see, so I guess two of these are mainstream and one of them are from those lefties at one of those sites. So, uh, let's see, excuse me, I'm going to put this little dog up so he can go hang out on the bed. From the Guardian, uh... Only 5% of plastic waste generated by U.S. last year was recycled, report says. Only 5% of the mountains of plastic waste generated by U.S. households last year was recycled, according to new research by Greenpeace. <clears throat> Americans, including yours truly, I, I fully admit... I do not recycle plastics for the simple reason there is no such thing as recycling plastic in this country. It is a bright green lie. Uh, anyway, that's just why I don't. Uh, so Americans, including uh, uh, yours truly, discarded 51 million tons of wrappers, bottles, and bags in 2021, about 309 pounds of plastic per person, of which almost 95% ended up in landfills, oceans, or scattered in the atmosphere in tiny toxic particles. The uh, plastic problem is not just down to wanton consumerism or laziness. In fact, the situation would still be bad even if every household separated every piece of plastic and disposed of it in a dedicated recycling plant, according to Greenpeace. And I, I've had this rant before. You've heard all of this. We know this. This is not news for doomers. Now, it did mention that we actually, you know, officially, via the corporate greenwashing channels, uh, you know, promoting recycling as the solution to the plastic problem. We, we supposedly got to 9% a few years ago, but, but the only reason for that is that, you know, we used to send this shit to China when you went to the recycling center and uh, so as long as it was shipped off to a Chinese recycling center, it was counted on the books as being recycled. And we all know uh, the, the sick joke of that. It was never been more than 5%. And then, you know, they mention in here where there's going to be three times as much plastic on this planet three times uh, by the year 2050 as there is now. 95%, that, that's in the U.S., that 95% of it goes into the landfill. You know, think if this were Honduras, Nicaragua, uh, Kenya, Indonesia, uh, where virtually 100% of this shit it goes, uh, quote, in the landfill, whatever that means. Uh, it's just a temporary way station, you know, into the rivers and into the oceans. So, uh, so much for recycling 
to save the planet. Uh, okay, I was just talking uh, on the Manga Bay Roundup was running this story just last week, so I'm not going to get very deep into it. So it's showing up in Manga Bay, and then a few days later, this is the number two story on the planet, at least for Doomers today, according to Yahoo News. This is just from Yahoo News. This is an essay written by a fellow named Ian Urbina of the Outlaw, Outlaw Ocean Project, uh, telling us about how a third of all fish caught in the oceans are turned into something that no one eats. Well, no human eats. The oceans are running out of fish. To slow down that, prom that problem, environmentalists pushed for fish farming or aquaculture. And this fellow, Ian, he never uh, mentions that aquaculture is, is one of the cornerstones of the, you know, the UN's sustainable development, how we're going to feed, uh, what is it, 8 billion, 9 billion, 10 billion, 11 billion people on the planet uh, by fish farming, where we're just going to raise fish that are, I guess, are going to eat air. And that's the, so this is still, by the United Nations, aquaculture is one of the big sustainable, uh, you know, industries to feed a planet of, of humans who should never have been born. All right. To slow down, you know, the problem of the fact that the oceans are running out of fish, environmentalists push for fish farming or aquaculture, this was supposed to be the solution, but it ended up being a problem on its own. The industry, you know, the aquaculture industry, cheerleading, you know, from the UN and all the rest of these clueless morons. Uh, they're, they're not clueless morons. They're capitalist pig uh, greenwashers running the UN peddling this bullshit, this bright green lie about aquaculture. This was supposed to be the solution, but it ended up being a problem on its own. This industry, which is what it is, it is an industry, make no mistake about what aquaculture is. It is a huge part of the global industrial uh, big ag. Uh, this industry became too big and too hungry to fatten the farmed fish faster. They started feeding them high-protein pellets called fish meal, made from massive amounts of, you guessed it, fish, meaning wild fish, caught at sea and pulverized into powder now more than 30%, now more than 30% of all marine life pulled from the sea goes to feed other fish. You know, the sustainably raised uh, farmed fish. 30% and that, you know, they're talking about a manga bay and, and now they're moving into uh, their heart, you know, ramping up. Uh, harvesting Antarctic krill, and, you know, one of the bases of the global food chain is part of this. Um, anyway, we've heard this, so I don't need to uh, go on with this one, but I did like this one. I think a couple of you sent me this one from those little lefties over at Common Dreams. This is by an essay by a fellow named Jorge Aguilar, who is Jorge Aguilar is the Southern Region Director at Food and Water Watch. So I will read about the first half of this and I'll try to remember to put the link in here. 
and you can uh, if there's if there's anything about carbon capture you fail to understand okay it's uh, it, it's it's the same thing as recycling and fish farming carbon capture is unadulterated horse shit it is corporate green washing it is to uh, pull the wool over the little lefty greenies eyes that we're gonna save the planet by sucking this stuff right out of the air and uh, as we see over and over again who is the biggest cheerleader of carbon capture on the planet it is fossil fuel corporations it is big oil lobbying for more and more of this carbon capture because it is giving them a, a green light it, it is a gift on a silver platter uh, to big oil that it, it, it is corporate welfare to keep the fossil fuel engine running by claiming we don't have to stop because we're just going to suck this stuff right out of the air unadulterated horseshit Anyway, take it away, Jorge, for and try to explain this. Maybe you can say something to anybody who does not understand this yet. We can and must stop carbon capture in its tracks. Big oil stands to pocket billions of dollars in taxpayer dollars by way of carbon capture their latest climate scam. These are lefties at Common Dreams, okay? This is not some uh, climate change denying right-wing clueless moron Trump tard. These are lefties who get it. What a scam this is. Uh, it's a scam, it's a joke, it's a rip-off, it's a bright green lie. <clears throat> All right, take it away. All right. The crises of the past few years have done a number on our economy from rising rent to climbing grocery bills from a deadly pandemic. Yeah, I think we're up to 0.2% of the planet to climate-fueled natural disasters. Recently, our elected officials have passed two major legislation packages that aim to bring relief. There we go. These packages have also been touted as environmental wins that will help us fight and adapt to climate change. But they also came with major gifts to big oil. These gifts you know, in this legislation that was passed with all the lobbying by the fossil fuel uh, henchmen are endangering our chances for a livable future. And while everyday people struggle to pay their bills, our taxpayer money is headed for big oil's already overflowing pockets in one of the greatest heists of our climate crisis, the companies responsible for the crisis are raking in billions of our taxpayer dollars, and much of that money is being poached through the industries, you know, the fossil fuel industry's latest scam, carbon capture and storage. Carbon capture well, the, the, the subheading is carbon capture flushes our money down an oil well. Carbon capture refers to some pie-in-the-sky greenwashing technologies meant to remove carbon pollution from smokestacks or the atmosphere. And big oil is all for it because it means they can go about their business as usual polluting and plundering 
Well, just with a shiny new toy attached. In fact, the corporations responsible for the climate crisis stand to profit from many of the carbon capture projects planned. Thanks to all the recent hype, ExxonMobil announced it expects the carbon capture market to grow $2 trillion through 2040. So it is now positioning itself as a major player in that field despite their disinterest in clean energy so far. That is because rather than combating clim climate change, carbon capture will only prolong the fossil fuel industry. This technology is incredibly energy intensive. Food and Water Watch found that if every power plant in the U.S were retrofitted with it, we would use more, we would use more natural gas and coal than we already do, 39 and 43 percent more respectively. Then of course they link you over to where they came up with that. Moreover, while proponents claim all the carbon will be stored safely underground, that has not played out so far. At least 95% of CO2 currently captured is used to push more fossil fuels out of the ground via enhanced oil recovery. What do you think is enhancing the oil recovery is forcing that that CO2 down there to uh, pump all that stuff back. You know the stuff that they were leaving in the ground. You know that leave it in the ground bullshit. Well w even when they leave it in the ground they're they're using carbon capture to you know to get out of the ground uh, what they already left behind. This is the opposite. It is carbon capture is get it out of the ground. Get squeeze every drop out of this planet that you can and let the taxpayers subsidize you. Our government has already invested billions of our dollars into carbon capture scams and that money has only produced more climate pollution and more profits for big oil. Yes, the U.S. has already spent billions on failed carbon capture projects. The U.S. has piloted carbon capture projects for over a decade now with little to show with it. It began with the failure of the 1980s clean coal scam, which industry claimed would remove carbon pollution from the coal equation. Then in 2009, Congress invested $3.4 billion in carbon capture. That money funded nine huge projects of which only two remain operational. None of the carbon capture power plant projects are still running. I covered uh, this part of the story in a, in a similar rant. So this, this middle section uh, we, we've already been over. Uh, <clears throat> the bottom line is in fact the use of carbon capture in this country has led to a net increase in emissions thanks to all the energy it requires. Uh, despite the failures, faith and funds in carbon capture remain alive and well. That's because some politicians are willing to do the bidding of energy corporation executives who see the climate crisis as yet another money-making opportunity. Uh, and if big oil has its way, we will keep spending on carbon capture. You're damn straight 
Uh, we will. In recent years, our government has ramped up investments in the carbon capture boondoggle. Uh, in 2021, the bipartisan infrastructure law designated more than $7 billion in taxpayer money to carbon capture projects. Uh, in addition to $2.7 billion in regular appropriations, and now we have this bullshit Inflation Reduction uh, Act. Uh, you know, this just goes, uh, the bottom line, we can and must stop carbon capture in its tracks. Economic and climate anxieties have pushed public opinion ever more in favor of getting our emissions in check. Oil and gas executives have been, have happily hopped on the bandwagon while getting away with polluting even more and even longer. While corporations tout new climate and net zero goals, they siphon billions of our taxpayer dollars for failing schemes and lip service because they, kn they know the truth as much as we do. Carbon capture is an unproven, unrealistic racket that detracts from real climate action. Although, of course, we leave it there and then we don't uh, find out what real climate action is. Uh, so anyway, I think you've uh, found the common denominator. But before I go, I do want to tip the Doomer hat to uh, to the Guardian for at least having the cojones to uh, publish these two letters to the editor. The future of, of life on Earth depends on curbing overpopulation. Yes, as humanity hits 8 billion people, Robin Maynard and John Seeger write about the loss of biodiversity and renewable res uh, resources. Uh, anyway, so we've, we've heard all this uh, before about how many planets we need in all of this. And, uh, <clears throat> but at least the, the Guardian is putting the O word in the headline, even if it is opinion. Uh, there is one way to reduce plastic pollution. There is one way to get rid of aquaculture. Uh, there is one way to reduce carbon emissions. That is to reduce the population of this planet. Every single one of these problems, every single environmental problem on this planet, every single one of them, every one of them, there is not one environmental problem on this planet that is not either directly caused or at least exacerbated. There's too goddamn many people on this planet using too much energy, too much plastic, eating too much food. Uh, we, we can sit here, tell the cows come home, uh, talking about all the ways we're going to supply food and energy and all the rest to 8, 10, 12 billion, however many people uh, talking out your ass that when nobody is talking about uh, dealing with this from the demand side by lowering the number of people making demands on this planet. We are completely doomed until we get serious about bringing down the population of this planet. And uh, I think Mother Nature, maybe we will see, and uh, maybe Haiti, uh, we will see Mother Nature uh, taking care of some uh, little overshoot problems on this planet. Anyway, uh, I 
forgot to bring my damn drink out here, and now I've worked myself up into a lather, so I'm going to go over there and refresh my drink while I still can. I highly suggest you do the same. Bye, guys.